Hello and welcome back. So in this video we'll be doing what we were doing with the centers and the D in terms of looking at these positions through this 3D scatter plot. And what we're doing today is utilizing multi-position players, guys who are sing uh, you know center left wing, center right wing, left wing, right wing. These are guys that you're gonna wanna add to your lineup because they give you a lot of positional flexibility and it could make or break where you're choosing guys or who you're gonna choose, uh, you know, this player versus that player in the first round or whatever. So we'll look at this in a little bit more detail and this can help you with your strategy because if you get one of these guys up front, it opens up a little bit more for you towards the tail end of your draft. So if you get a multi-position player in the first round, maybe you can you know, think about uh, you know, your left wing, right wing, center composition a little bit differently as we head through the draft. But without further ado, let's get right into the analysis. So these are the multi-position guys. You can see the graph is built a little differently because there's not that many of them, which makes them more rare and more valuable in fantasy. And obviously this is a strategy that a lot of you use already, but now we've I've just updated these positions so these should be accurate uh, as far as 9, 19, 23 goes. But you look here at the top, there's a couple of guys. If you're in this first round range, obviously the first three picks, you should pick those three centers. You should pick McDavid, Dreisaitl, McKinnon. And then there's a couple of other options that you have. And in that range... Uh, here's Dreisaitl, center left wing. You got Matthew Kachuk, left wing, right wing. And then you've got Jack Hughes, I believe, center left wing. So of those two, Dreisaitl and Kachuk are the most valuable. Now, uh, Dreisaitl is 1.56 points per game or 1.6 points per game. Kachuk in the 1.3, 1.35 range. Hughes hasn't gotten to that point yet. He could. He definitely has that ceiling. Uh, a little bit less valuable. So back end of the first round. These are some of the guys you want to target because they're dual position eligible, which gives you more flexibility to move guys in and around your lineup and get more games played per week. Then that's the first tier. So the next tier down, you got Stutzla, who's insane value in this range. Uh, as I kind of mentioned before, he's extremely complete uh, and he's kind of had his coming out party last year. And that was kind of a starter kit. He's getting more reinforcements now in Ottawa. He's going to be potentially top line center. They have a ton of talent to work with bunch of good defensemen, et cetera. Nugent Hopkins comes into play here, center left wing. Uh, again, I think it's too early for Nuge there, but uh, he obviously, based on what he did last year, he should go there if you're just looking at last year's stats. Then you look at uh, kind of a middle tier here. These green guys, you got Zach Hyman, you got Steven Stamkos, Timo Meyer, JT Miller. All of those guys going in this range between, let's say, 30 and 45 JT Miller, early 40s. So this range is where you could target a bunch of these guys. Miller's extremely complete. He might go a little bit earlier because of that. Uh, Stamkos could be there for you, Hyman. Um, so these are really good options. The guys in green are these dual position eligible guys that you're going to want to own. And this is where you can find them. So you got two right at the top of the draft first round. You got a back end first round, early second round guy. Then you've got these guys here, kind of in the mid-second, early third range in 12-team league, Nugent Hopkins, Stutzla. Uh, then you've got Hyman here, kind of in the third, fourth round range in that 40-plus, and JT Miller as well. Then we move it down a little bit, and you get a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of incompleteness. Dabrinkit should be a little bit higher just based on his goal ceiling. Uh, we've mentioned every pretty much every other one of these guys already. Jesper Bratt. Giroux, Dabrinkit, Kairou is dual position eligible apparently now. Uh, as we twist it this way, Pavelski, he's another one of those guys that you definitely want access to because of that top line exposure. Uh, Svechnikov, D PLD is apparently two position eligible now. Uh, I don't know where they're going to use him. Same with Kempe. Uh, I don't know why. I, I think Kempe must be left wing, right wing. I don't know why they put him as a center, but I think he did center at, at a couple points in the season last year. But they do have plenty of center depth now, so he's probably not going to stay as center uh, for much longer, especially with PLD coming in. Kairou, Martin Neches, uh, Reinhardt, uh, Max Domi, Cole Caulfield is dual position eligible. That makes him even more valuable, which is crazy that he's going at 140. He's a 40, 50 goal guy, dual position eligible, and he's going that late. He's one of those, uh, I don't know about ride or die guys for me, but I do like him a lot, especially if you can find him at value there. Braden Shen, Boone Jenner is an extremely complete player. Don't let this graph fool you. He's towards the bottom of it, um, but that's because he's not getting valued because of his ADP. He's very complete. Uh, I believe he was an 80 on my completeness rankings, which is probably top 20, 25 
does a little bit of everything, and he's going to get you at, you know potential exposure to Line A and Goudreau or whoever else they throw up there, depending on what the line combinations look like. You got Buchnevich here, who's dual, dual position as a center winger right now. Barzell apparently be getting right wing uh, uh, classification, or whatever you want to call it. And I don't normally like Barzell, but if he's dual position, he is a little bit more valuable because he's basically close to a point per game guy. You'd like to see more shots. You'd like to see a lot more from him in general. But uh, you know, if he's playing with Bo Horvat and you know maybe Anders Lee, that could be an interesting line to look at. Nothing is interesting to look at on Long Island, but we're trying to you know pump him up a little bit there. Um, some of these guys, Jake DeBrusque, I think falls back a little bit just because of what is happening in Boston. Uh, but yeah, there is some definite value to be had. Some of these guys you would only draft because they're dual position eligible. I mentioned Tara Vinen in the bounce back video. Uh, he could be an assist power play kind of bounce back guy where you're not going to get shots and goals, but dual position eligible and you're getting those things. Um, some of these guys, Raymond, I think should be a bounce back type of player. Uh, Barbashev going really low in the draft. Uh, he's going to get you top line Vegas exposure potentially at 160 plus ADP. That could be interesting to look at. Uh, just doesn't have the point ceiling, which is why some of these guys are down here. They're either really complete and not very high point ceiling or high point ceiling or, you know, high, really good in one or two categories, but nothing crazy. So uh, some of these guys are not necessarily guys that you want to target. Dawson Mercer is interesting because he is up and coming. He did have a good season last year, but the metrics just don't show him being a breakout kind of guy yet he could be and if you want to get out in front of it you would draft him because you're getting potential top nine exposure in new jersey but the power play time is probably not going to be there which is going to hinder him a little bit uh riley smith who knows what's going to happen with him coming to pittsburgh i don't know where they're going to use him i would imagine top six but i don't know about power play time there duchene and sagan are both on this list lawson kraus actually came uh into his own a little bit last year putting up a little bit of peripherals, some hits and stuff. Um, and, you know, nobody wants to own Coyotes and they are going to be improved. So a dual position guy, that could be something to look at. But what you're going to think about in terms of strategy is you're going to want those D spread out a little bit more. You're not going to want to, you know, try to target those guys too, too early. You're going to want to target the, uh, the goal scoring wingers early and you're going to want to target the dual position guys. So Kachuk, Dreisaitl, Hughes, these are huge, huge targets this year in fantasy. Stutzla, uh, I don't know about Nuge in terms of the same caliber as like Stutzla here. Um, but there are a number of other guys in this range. Stamkos, Miller, Meyer. These are targets in the third to fifth round range for you. Goaltending is a whole different story. Uh, I've mentioned that in the goaltending video where you should tar target guys. And if you haven't watched that video, go check that one out. It's in the 23-24 draft playlist. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to do it for this video. We kind of went over a little bit of everything. Centers, wingers, D, and multi-position players. Stay tuned because I'm putting together my complete draft strategy video right now. I know some of you have had your drafts a little bit uh, early already. I don't recommend that necessarily because preseason could determine a number of things. Guys could get injured. Guys could make a name for themselves in preseason. Not that we want to pay too much attention to it, but uh, a lot of drafts will be happening the first week of October. So in trying to get ready for that, I'm putting together my my full uh, draft strategy video right now. So stay tuned for that one coming up in the next couple days, but that's going to do it for this one. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.